Hey there, elementary music teachers. Mr. Henry here, and I am really excited to have Jessica Peresta on the channel today to discuss an upcoming week of free elementary music coaching to help make the start of next year stress-free. My guest Jessica has helped thousands of music teachers just like you with great content on her blog and website called The Domestic Musician and also on her podcast called The Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. And she is actually hosting a 2022 coaching week from June 26th to July 3rd. During this coaching week, Jessica will have an exclusive Facebook group designed for music teachers to ask questions and attend live trainings where she helps you plan your first month of school for the upcoming year, along with other trainings like how to simplify overall lesson planning. And she will even discuss mindset, which is so important as you are making your way through the teaching year. And we are going to learn a little about all three of those today, so stay tuned. This free coaching week, which starts June 26, will be live, but if the session time does not jive with your schedule that day, or you're on vacation during that week, or you just want to go to the pool, <laughs> all of the video replays will be available so you can watch whenever and still have access to ask questions during the week. So I'm excited to join this coaching week and I hope you join me to learn more from elementary music coach, Jessica Peresta. You can type this web address here to join the coaching week or follow the link in the description box as well. But let's dive into more of what we will see during the week with Jessica. Hey, Jessica, and welcome to the channel. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So thanks so much for being here with me. And today we're going to get some insight into a free week-long elementary music coaching extravaganza. That's what I'm calling it, the extravaganza. <laughs> and uh, it is free, uh, which is uh, really going to give teachers some push for the start of uh, the next year. And, you know, personally, I know that if I put a little time aside now to plan, I'm probably going to thank myself later. So um, just really interested in today's discussion of learning a few strategies that will be emphasized during the daily sessions during the, the week coaching, uh, one being how to simplify lesson planning and also discussing mindset. Um, then learning more about what's involved during the week of the free coaching. Uh, but mm -hmm. before we get to all that, uh, it would be great to just learn you know, more about you. So mm -hmm. could you give us some background about yourself, your music teaching journey, and where you are today professionally? Sure. So I graduated with my bachelor's in music education in 2004 and um, taught in Tulsa for seven years. And I was one of the weird people that graduated in December and then was okay. just going to su substitute teach and get a teaching job that fall. Well, one position opened up in Tulsa public schools okay. and I got the job. So nice. didn't know at the time though, that this school hadn't had a music program for seven years, had mm. no instruments, had no curriculum, had mm. nothing literally. Wow. <laughs> and I had no budget. So okay. I just <laughs> was like, it's a job. Great. Sure. For and out of college. So, um, lo and behold, I took the position Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, I built the music program up and was there actually seven years. So seven's the magic number apparently in my life. And yeah. then um, we, my family moved to Arkansas, transferred my teaching certificate with every single intention in the world of going back into the classroom, getting a mm -hmm. job here. Yeah. And I was pregnant with my second son. And then we had a third boy. We found out our oldest had autism and our middle son had seven food allergies. And I did not feel comfortable oh, wow. putting either of them in daycare. So yeah. I said, okay, I don't know for how long, and I don't know how we're going to make this work, but we're going to make it work, and then I'm going to go yeah. back to the classroom. Well, mm -hmm. when I, I kept, when I was in the classroom, I kept getting asked the same questions by teachers at PD or um, wherever. If they would hear my story, they're like, well, how did you do that? How did right. you teach without a curriculum? How did you teach without instruments? How did you, how did you, how did you? And I was like, sure. I just kind of figured it out. And then that's the mm -hmm. honest truth. And I finally was like, well, maybe there's something to that because I love mentoring teachers. Mm -hmm. I loved, I loved having student teachers. So I thought, what could I do with this while I'm home before I go back into the classroom? What could I do to help? So I started a blog. 
um, yeah. makes it sound so easy. I just started a blog. No, it was <laughs> not that easy. Trust me. My husband luckily is very techie and helped me build a website and all that. But anyways, nice. it just started with that. Turn into a podcast, um, the elementary music teacher podcast, turn into right. a book, turn into a membership site and just grew and yeah, cool. naturally. So yeah. I am doing this now full time. Never in a million years did I think this would be my life. And yeah. um, seven years later, here I am still. Um, it's really seven cool. years, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm telling you, seven <laughs> is the number. <laughs> well, I think crazy. you're right about that. Yeah. I think five to seven <laughs> years. You know, yeah. yeah. My mom was a, a music teacher, and she said, "Yeah, it's going to take you probably five years to build the mm -hmm. program at your school." Yeah, and yeah, so I think yeah, that's definitely a thing. So, mm -hmm. but sorry, go ahead, continue. No, so that's that's what I'm doing now. I yeah. am now running my business full time. Where now I get to help music teachers that's awesome. um, be your best selves in your classroom, and I yeah. love it. So yeah. yeah, that's where I'm at now. That's so great. So one of the sessions uh, discusses simplifying your lesson planning. Um, and, you know, there'll be more within that session. But tell us a little how we start the process of thinking about a simplified lesson plan. Yeah. So like I said, my journey started where I didn't have a curriculum. I didn't mm -hmm. have lessons to, you know, sometimes you'll follow in the footsteps of someone who leaves you lesson plans to use or things like that. But I am so glad looking back now, I started with nothing really right. because I was able to build out my own curriculum, um, slowly get the resources and lessons I wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think for most teachers, when I was thinking about this question, the overwhelm comes from either having not enough resources like I was in or having too many or right. not having a scope and sequence or, or curriculum map or having too many because a lot of times when you you know, subscribe to an online curriculum or you have in-person curriculum, it usually comes with a curriculum map. So then mm -hmm. you're left with like 10 of them and you're like, they're all similar, but a little different and it's right. overwhelming. Um, and so those things will cause the overwhelm. So when it comes to simplifying lesson planning, what really has worked for me, and I'm getting my master's in educational technology and we really talked about backwards planning a lot. And okay. I never put a name to what it is, but this is what I did. You start with a bigger picture where and not, and some people just do this, but I know some music teachers do not. Right. Where, what I mean is you look at the full year and then you break it down by nine weeks and then you break those nine weeks down by weeks mm -hmm. and focusing on the grade level. So it's about, and we're going to cover this in a lot more detail, but the sure. main things about simplifying lesson planning is staying organized, using the resources you already have available first. Right. You do have things already there, even if it's just one lesson. Right. <laughs> you, um, having a running list of songs and activities that you can teach to the concepts, because focusing on the concepts before looking for the songs, which sometimes mm -hmm. those things are reversed. Knowing how long you see your students is huge. And this will um, help you with knowing how much to fit into a lesson plan. And then the last thing I say when it comes to simplifying lesson planning is to stay flexible and know that no two classes learn the same way. That's and that's right. okay. So we yeah. will cover all that a lot more. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And I love that idea of really just looking at the big picture first mm -hmm. and then getting because it's just, it's easier to manage. Right. Because right. it right. can just be a lot if you're just looking at one little specific thing. So, yeah, right. Yeah, that's great. So another session during the week is to discuss mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us more about what to expect, like in regards to mindset. Like, mm -hmm. like, what exactly do you mean by that? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was in the classroom, um, I actually wrote a book and that's and this is not to me plugging my book. But the reason I wrote my book was because of the things you don't really know until you get in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You're just told teach music, but there is so much more that goes into being a music teacher yeah. than just teaching music. And I don't right. mean just teaching music, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's So there's definitely mindset struggles music teachers face day in and day out. And like I said, a lot of it has to do with things outside of teaching music. And a lot of times too, teachers I mentor, I see them comparing themselves to what others are doing based on mm. what they see on social media, but sure. that's the highlight reels. And it's that, that's right. the good. And that's great. Like we want people to experience good, Sure. but I don't feel like a lot of times what's talked about is the hard, is the, I'm struggling with this, this is hard. And um, so during coaching week, I there's a lot that goes into mindset. It can be a lot of different areas, but we're gonna focus on three main areas and there will be some question prompts to answer during the week. And then the Facebook Live will just kind of address all these areas. Nice. One is about work-life balance. 
um, which that can be a million different, you know, go a million different ways to yeah. uh, another one is b- about getting ready to go back to school. There's so many mindset things you're th- thinking about and dealing with when you just think about that topic alone. And then right. the ins and outs of teaching elementary music, your mindset around that, like what, I mean, you just got a lot of feelings and uh, maybe it's certain people or colleagues that made you feel a certain way, or maybe it's you used to love your job and now you just have kind of lost that passion. And we're going to mm-hmm. just kind of touch on some of those areas and help you move forward in right. getting hopefully past them a little bit if you can. Yeah, that's awesome because, yeah, you're right. There's so many different aspects to it. You're not just in there mm-hmm. teaching. Um, you know, I think sometimes like when people perform like, the best part of performing is getting up on stage and doing the performance, but yeah. then you got to tear everything down, right? That's like all right. the mm-hmm. all the stuff that you don't like. Yeah. You don't even like think about that you have to do that, and, right. and there are so many layers of that within the within the teaching profession, just in general. Yeah. So, and then especially as the music teacher, you know, there's so many different things that you have to organize and do and are expected to do. So, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 I was just going to say another part of the week is um, getting the first month of the school year all planned out, which is great. Um, uh, So tell us about how that session will work. Yeah. So I know that's a lofty goal, first of all. So my goal, like I said, is to help you plan out your first month. But what I also say is my goal is to help you be on your way to doing that. So if you leave that session, you're like, wait a minute, I'm not, I I just have one week. That's great. Like we're going to celebrate your wins no matter how big or small. Yeah. The reason I'm hosting this session is because I don't know if you can, you can probably relate to this bill. A lot of times the elementary music teacher, you're the only one in your school building. I did my student. Yeah. My student teaching placement though. I don't know a lot of schools like this, but they had a lower elementary music teacher and a higher grade elementary music teacher. Oh, okay. Very rare. And I don't see that very often, but so like I said, most of the time though, that's not, you know, the, the way it is. So you see grade level teams planning together in Mm -hmm. elementary and on secondary, you see subject area teachers planning together, but you don't really get that opportunity. And, uh, you can maybe talk to other music teachers and ask them questions at PDs or, or Kadai levels or even online, but it's still not the same as being able to come together. It basically is like a, like a grade level planning meeting is what I'm trying to put together here. And so this session, you'll be able to bring your resources, ask questions, talk about what objectives and concepts you're covering in week one and listen to what other teachers are doing. So you can, maybe you're not able to sit there and lesson plan, but you can just take notes and be like, oh my gosh, that's a good idea. So maybe even after the session, you're able to go back with the ideas you wrote down and start planning. And that's the goal. Yeah, that's awesome. And and yeah, just to bounce ideas off of others is great. And yeah, we Mm -hmm. do experience that in the beginning of the year with PDs. I feel like lately we haven't had, and where I teach in uh, Cecil mm-hmm. County, Maryland, we haven't had as many um, group things together. Uh, but when we do, it really is nice to be able to just bounce some ideas off. Oh. And and not only to get ideas from others, but even just to kind of make it like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm doing this right. Like this is yeah. this is what we're supposed to be doing. You know, it just gives right. you that that um, validation in what you're doing. So I think it's, that's really great that you're doing that. So yeah, yeah, I'm really um, excited. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, that'll be fun. So in the intro, I mentioned that all of the live video sessions will be recorded, right? So yes, even if you're not able to attend that day, or you're out that week because of vacation, all of that great info is recorded mm-hmm. and available for replay. And of course, questions can be asked and answered during the week via the yes. Facebook group, right? So you were saying that. Yeah. Yes, so, absolutely. And, yeah, that's awesome. And I'm I'm looking forward to get some planning done uh, with the guidance of you, Jessica. So yeah. Uh, so everyone out there, join us. Uh, Jessica, it's been great having you on the channel. Thank you again. And are there any fun summer plans for you guys? <sighs> Yeah, well, my family's taken off to the beach in nice. a couple of weeks, so we're okay. really excited about that. That's, that's cool. the main thing this summer I'm so excited about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, good, good. Well, appreciate you being on the channel, and thanks again. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it was a pleasure having Jessica on to get some quick tips 
and of course she will be going further during the week long session so join us with the link which is also found in the description box thanks again for being here with me and i'll see you in the next video